Hi, this is Mr. Rep. In this video, we're going to be looking at the partial quotient strategy for division, or as it's sometimes called, the multiplying up strategy. In order to know how to use this strategy, you need to know what the word quotient means. So quotient is the answer to a division problem. If we looked at 6 divided by 3, the quotient would be 2. 2 is the answer. Let's try to solve a division problem with some much larger numbers. So let's try to solve 983 divided by 4. In this strategy, we're going to set it up the same way you would set up a long or short division problem. So we're going to write down 983 divided by 4. And then we're going to draw a line down the side. And we're going to start thinking, what is a number that we can multiply by 4 to get close to 983? And we don't have to pick a perfect number. We're just going to choose numbers that we know are going to get us close to the answer. So when you're choosing numbers, choose simple numbers like uh, 5, 10, 20, 50, 100. Friendly numbers that are easy to multiply. So I know that I can multiply 4 times 100 and that won't, that'll get me at least somewhat on the way to 983. So I'm going to write down times 100 on the side, and I'm going to write down the answer to it, 4 times 100 beneath the 983 right here. So 4 times 100 is 400. I'm then going to subtract that off of the 983. You can see this is why we've chosen friendly numbers to work with, because it's easy to subtract. And so we've got part of our quotient now. Part of our quotient is the 100. We need to find the rest of our quotient. So we're going to think of another number we can multiply. I know that 400 worked well before, so I'm going to do that again. 4 times 100 equals 400. I'm going to subtract that off, and that leaves me with 183. I'm getting closer to the quotient, and here's my second part. Now, I can't choose 100 again because that would give me 400, which is much larger than 183, so I have to choose a different number. I could try 50. And I think 4 times 50 would be 200, so 50 is still too large. Uh, why don't I try 4 times 25? I know 25 is a nice friendly number to divide or multiply by. So 4 times 25 equals 100. I subtract that off and I'm left with 83. I know that another number I could try that will get me really close is 20. But you can try any number here. There's really no wrong numbers that you can write on the right-hand side. Uh, if you choose a number that's too high, then simply erase it and try a different one. So I know 4 times 20 is 80. I'm going to subtract that off, and that leaves me with 3. I can't go any further because 4 does not fit into 3. There's no number I can multiply by 4 to get to 3. So I have my answer, actually. I have all the different parts to the quotient right here. All I have to do is add together all the different parts. And again, this is why we've chosen easy numbers, because these numbers are very easy to add. 100 plus 100 is 200, plus 25 is 225, plus 20 is 245. And that is our quotient. This 3 at the bottom is our leftover or our remainder. So we can write 245 and then R3 to show remainder 3. And that's how we use the partial quotient to solve uh, division problems. Let's look at one more example. Let's do 752 divided by 2. So again, I'm going to set up my problem just as I would if I were trying to solve it using a long or short division problem. I'm going to write down 752 divided by 2, and then I'm going to draw the long line down the side. And again, I'm starting to think, what is a number I can multiply by 2 that will get me close to 752? It doesn't matter if I choose a number that's too big or too small, because I can always correct my mistake. So for example, if I choose, let's say 500, 2 times 500. I do the math and I find out that 2 times 500 is 1,000. That is too large. 1,000 is bigger than 752. So if you make a mistake, it's not really a big deal. All you can do is simply cross it out or erase it. So let's try a different number. 
500 was too big. Maybe I want to try 10. 2 times 10. 2 times 10 is 20. And I subtract 20 off, and I'm left with 732. Well, that didn't make a big dent in the number. So if I choose a number that's too small, like I did with this 10, it's not a big deal. I'll just try and choose a better number on my next try. So uh, let's do, I know I can go 2 times 200. Let's try that. 2 times 200 equals 600. And that made a big dent. I'm left with 132. I'm going to try 2 times 50. Again, I'm sticking with friendly numbers, numbers that are really easy to work with. That way I can have an easy time when I'm subtracting and an easy time when I'm adding them all up at the end. So 132 minus 100 equals 32. Oops. 2 times something equals 32. Um, I'll try 2 times 15. I know it will get me close to that. So 2 times 15 equals 30. I'm going to subtract the 30 off. I'm left with a 2. What can I multiply? By 2 to get to 2, well, just 1. So 2 times 1 equals 2. I'm left with no remainder. So my last step now is to add up all the different parts of my quotient. I'm going to add up 10 plus 200 plus 50 plus 15 plus 1. 10 plus 200 is 210 plus 50 is 260 plus 15 is 275, plus 1 is 276. And that is what I'm going to write at the top. Being that I was left with 0 at the very bottom, I don't have a remainder in this problem. And that is how we use the partial quotient method for solving division problems.